Hello and welcome back to part 11 of my journey towards my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governors University. So today's video is going to be focused on the two classes that I was able to complete this week and uh, just to give you some tips and tricks and hopefully help you pass these classes and uh, quickly and so you can move on with the rest of your degree program. All right, let's move straight in. So the first class I did this week was Ethics in Technology, which was class number C961. Okay, so good news about this particular class. Um, I'm fairly confident if you've had any past experience in an IT department or even in kind of a corporate environment, uh, you might be able to pass this one fairly quickly. In fact, it might be a candidate simply to test out of and the reason I say that is because a lot of the questions are based around kind of standard ethical questions in a workplace environment. Um, if you haven't worked in an environment like that, please don't worry. I think you might need to do just a little bit more additional study. Uh, there is some terminology that you may not know or understand, and uh, you might need to touch up on those before you go ahead and take the exam. But I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit in a second. So what does ethics in technology mean? Well, let me give you an example of the kind of question you might get. So um, you're a desktop admin, uh, you're in an IT department, you only have one license left for a piece of software. You install it on everybody's desktops in your uh, software department and you use the last key, the only key on all of them. So is that ethical? Is it unethical? Is it legal? Is it illegal? Now, these are the kind of questions you're going to get. So clearly in that scenario it is basically unethical and it is illegal because it's basically copyright theft. You've only got one license and you're using it for all of the desktops. So these are the kind of questions you'll get. And basically you just have to identify it and why it's why it's right or wrong, basically. Um, another example for you might get is uh, there's a car accident. Somebody's critically ill. They need to get to hospital as soon as possible. You load them in your car. You're racing through town to get to the hospital. You're running lights. You're speeding uh, to try and save this person's life. So is that ethical or unethical? Well, probably ethical because you're trying to save this person's life. Is it legal or illegal? Well, it's illegal because you're running lights and speeding. Do you see what I'm saying? These are the kind of questions you're going to get. Now, that one's quite simple examples, but it's along those lines. So like I said, if you've got past experience in any kind of IT environment, you could probably take the pre-assessment straight off the bat, like I always recommend. Look at the coaching report. Uh, if there's any areas that you need to work on, focus on those and then move on to the objective assessment. Um, honestly, I probably spent maybe four or five hours total on this particular class and then took the exam. The exam itself is, uh, let me think, it was 70 questions and it was 90 minutes long. Um, I felt like it was a little tight for time, but you should be OK. As always, it's multiple choice. And like I say, if you read the questions and you recognize the answers, you can move through it pretty quickly. Uh, this particular class, um, I it was a weird one because uh, often when I take exams, I don't know if you've had this experience, I'm taking the class exam and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I've got I'm failing. You know, I'm scared I'm going to fail and I kind of get a sick feeling. And then, and then sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised at the end that I actually passed and maybe did better than I thought. This particular class was the complete opposite. I was answering the questions and generally I thought I got them all right. Uh, and then I looked at my report, I did pass, but I got competent rather than exemplary. And I was kind of surprised because to this day, I still really don't know which ones I got wrong. But I guess a pass is a pass and that's all that matters. So on that note, I would say the objective assessment is a little difficult, uh, more difficult than the pre-assessment. So make sure any areas, like I said, you identify, just make sure you uh, touch up on those and be, be ready to go. In terms of study material, um, there's lots of it out there, as always, uh, in the WGU study material. But for this, I really think you should focus on Quizlet. I'm going to put some links to the one, the, the cards and the sets that I used in the description. That was really enough to get me ready to go. So uh, I think if you study those and you get those terminology and kind of the questions down, I think you'll be fine to pass this one fairly quickly. Next up was Introduction to Humanities, which is class number C100. Now, um, I've got to be honest with you, this one was a struggle. Uh, I put maybe 15 to 20 hours of study into this class. Honestly, I really don't have much interest in human, uh, humanities just in general. And I really had to kind of force myself to study because I really didn't find it very interesting at all. I found the material a little dry and a bit boring. And um, like I said, pushed myself to get it done. The key to this class is basically it focuses on humanities, which is the study of the human condition. You know, what makes us human? Over, certainly over our evolution anyway. And they break it into five key time areas or time periods uh, in, in human 
uh, evolution, and that is the Classical period, the Renaissance period, the Neoclassical period, the Romantic period, and the Realist period. And then they break it down even further. So each one of those uh, periods of time, they then break it down into themes, things that uh, represented the people and the types of uh, the environment that those people were living in that time period. So, for example, for the Renaissance period, uh, it was a rebirth of classicism, humanism, uh, rationalism, and scientific expansion. It was the start of the university system and the individual self-fashioning themselves and reformation and things like that. And so basically you learn what all these different uh, terms mean, how they influence the people at the time. And then that's how you, you know, get through each one of those sections or modules in the class. Um, it goes a step further. So in those periods as well, you focus on the artwork that was uh, or the buildings, the, uh, the the literature of those time periods as well. And what, you know, what influenced them? Why did people you know, uh, read and write and uh, paint in those uh, in those styles? So as you can tell, there's quite a lot of material there. It's not as difficult as maybe as it sounds, especially if you have any kind of previous experience. But for me, I didn't. So I had to look at the material and, and get through it. As always, uh, WGU's material is pretty good. There's a library. There's links to different uh, time periods. They break it down quite well for you. Uh, the cohorts are particularly helpful in this particular class, especially there's a pre-recorded one for the exam process. I would definitely take that because it, it's about 45 minutes long. And what it does is he goes through 13 to 15 example questions and kind of uh, explains to you about how you should break up the question and how you should get down to the right answer. Like a lot of testing, you can normally narrow it down to two and then it's making the correct decision on that. This particular class, they deliberately go out of their way to try and trick you. So if you don't read the question properly, you could potentially uh, get it wrong just by simply reading the question quickly and then picking the answer that associates what you think best. Like I said, uh, watch the cohort. I think it will definitely help you. It certainly did for me. Uh, Quizlet, again, is your friend here. I'm going to, again, post more links to the ones I use, the sets, and I think that will help you as well. Um, there is a second part to this class as well. Not only do you have a, like an objective assessment, you also have a paper that you have to write. Don't panic. It's not actually that difficult. It's basically six to eight paragraphs. They give you a list of maybe 20 or 30 different subjects. It's kind of like art or um, a sculpture or a, um, a building from a certain uh, time period. And basically, you just have to write a little paper about you know how it influenced that particular culture and how it influences people today, etc. who built it, their influence, that kind of stuff. There is a, um, a rubric that goes along with it and a template. So really, it's it's not difficult. Like I said, six to eight paragraphs, it'll probably take you an hour at most to write the paper. So along with the objective assessment, um, that's how you pass this class. The objective assessment um, is a little bit more trickier than the pre-assessment. It has a strong focus on the classical period. I think it's okay to say that, so make sure you know that area particularly. Uh, in total, it's 50 questions. Uh, they give you three hours, believe it or not. I don't know why you need three hours, but that's what they give you. And um, yeah, that's basically about it. It's multiple choice as always. I think you're going to be fine. Like I said, if you've got any kind of experience with humanities recently or if you have an interest in that area, it might not be too bad for you. But for me, it was a bit of a struggle and uh, I got through it in the end. And thank God, because you know what, I'm glad it's over and I certainly won't uh, be doing humanities anytime soon. Again, um, I passed. I didn't pass uh, like with exemplary. I think I got competent. I was kind of in between the two. So solid pass. And that's all that matters. So next up for me is, uh, let me see, I had a meeting with my mentor this morning. I plan to do principles of management and English composition too. So I'm not quite sure how long those classes will take for me, uh, but probably won't have a video out for you for at least a week, maybe two, just depends on how hard those are. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope your study is going well. If you have any questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to uh, message me or put them in the comment section. I'll try and get back to you as quick as possible. Um, hope you're well. Hope your study's going good. As always, take care and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.